For my pure performance build guide videos, we are always just putting aesthetics aside and focusing all of our effort into getting as much FPS for your dollar. That's exactly what we did in today's video and this time with an $1,100 budget, but unironically, the aesthetics did happen to come out pretty clean. I've been personally gravitating towards these wood grain, non-RGB style of builds lately. I'm also drinking more whiskey and I'm only drinking black coffee these days. I don't know if I'm just getting old or what, but this is starting to become my style. Get off my lawn! I'm gonna show you all of the parts inside of here so you can copy it for yourself. We'll of course put it through a full benchmarking run to see what it's truly capable of and all of that is coming after a quick word from today's sponsor. And real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor GVG Mall can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows Active activation keys, as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too, like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. So to kick off our fancy pure performance build guide, we'll start with the CPU, and lo and behold, we're gonna go with the Ryzen 5 7600 yet again. Now, you do have several options to choose from here, and I make that decision based off of your budget. If you want to stay as budget as possible and stay on AM5, then you can get the 7500F from AliExpress, or if you want to boost up that gigahertz rating by just a little bit, then you can spend more on the 7600X. Just keep in mind that the more money you spend on the CPU, the less money you'll have on your GPU. This 7600 non-X model is right in the middle, which I think is a good sweet spot, and bonus points if you snag it on AliExpress for like 150 bucks. That's exactly what I did to keep our costs down. It was $160 with like a $10 coupon, but if you prefer to grab it brand new off Newegg or Amazon, you'll only be paying like 30 extra bucks, which is still definitely worth it. Now keep in mind that the Ryzen 9000 series to include the 9600X is launching in just a couple of weeks from now, so that should drop the price of the 7600X and even the 7600 even more, at least we can hope. To cool the 7600, we honestly don't need much, so I'm going with the ID Cooling Frozen A410 Black, not to be confused with that tiny A400 that I accidentally used a couple of videos ago. This cooler has an amazing combination of cooling performance for the money, along with some minimal and clean aesthetics. I love this aggressive, sharp angle design look, and it works absolutely perfectly with the aesthetics of our build, and it gets the job done in the cooling department, which is most important. The motherboard we're putting the 7600 into is the MSI Pro B650-S Wi-Fi, and this has been a reliable choice for me for several months now. I actually buy a ton of these for our glacial spike builds over on ZTTBuilds.com. For less than 150 bucks, we're getting all of the features that we need, including built-in Wi-Fi, and yeah, it's just a solid, trustable board from a brand that's actually not in the news for any sort of drama lately. It's a nice change of pace. We got lucky, don't jinx it. Next up, we have the RAM, and here's where I'll give you the only true disclaimer that we need for this build. I actually did already have this crucial DDR5 Pro kit sitting on the shelf, so I grabbed it for this build because it's perfect, but you don't necessarily have to copy this exact model. To be fair though, you don't ever need to do that with RAM. The main three things we're looking for are a 2x16GB DDR5 kit, clock that's 6,000 megahertz or possibly higher if you want to, and then as low of a CL rating as possible, preferably CL30 or CL32. This will run you about $95, and there should be multiple kits at that price available, so for a pure performance kind of build, just get whatever is the cheapest with those search filters that I just listed. After that, move on to the SSD, and here's a super budget Kingston MV2 one terabyte NVMe Gem 4 drive. This is honestly just one of the cheapest possible Gem 4 NVMe's on the market, but with a pure performance build, that's all we're looking for. Keep in mind, if you're a video editor or if your workflow will actually utilize faster read and write speeds, then by all means, spend the extra money to do that, but for the purpose of today's video, it's just not worth it for us. It's important to be clear that paying extra money for better parts like an SSD that won't directly give you more FPS in gaming still can be a good choice for your situation, it just doesn't help us in this type of video. I'm literally trying to save as much money as possible for the CPU and the GPU so that we can get the most FPS for our dollar 
but you copying this at home might not be doing that same thing. Moving on, we have the power supply, and this one kind of contradicts what I just said because I don't ever recommend cheaping out on this component. With $1,100 to spend, you absolutely shouldn't go any lower than tier C on the PSU tier list, and preferably you should be going with A or B. Just go to zttbuildhelp.com and navigate to the PSU tier list section. There's an explanation on how to use this site and a direct link. This here is the Thermaltake GF1 2024 edition, which I believe is tier B, but I don't think it actually made its way on the list yet, and it's outputting at 750 watts, which is exactly what we need. This is also a fully modular power supply, which is definitely handy when building, and that honestly kind of helped because our case isn't really helping us in the cable management process. This is the Magnium Gear Air 2 Black, and for 60 bucks, I do like what this case is offering, but cable management is clearly the one place where they decided to cut some costs. For 60 bucks, we're getting an ultra aesthetic wood grain front panel design, which again, I'm just really vibing with right now. I want to light up a cigar just looking at this, but as a kicker, it also includes four pre-installed all black 120 millimeter fans. That's literally all we need to keep our temperatures nice and low. So even in a pure performance build where we're not trying to spend any extra money on the aesthetics, this case still makes sense. Again though, here in the back, there's a very limited amount of cable zip tie brackets and certainly no channels or included Velcro for cable managing. This is pretty much as bare as it gets. The cable management still wasn't terribly difficult though because of our modular power supply and the fact that we aren't using cable extensions, but definitely something to be aware of if you are using this case. If you were to pack this case with like an AIO, extra RGB fans, or whatever other accessories, you would have a pretty difficult time managing all of that in the back. So now that we've optimized our parts list for performance before the GPU, we're looking at a total right now of $639. That gives us roughly $450 to $500 left to spend on the GPU, so what are we going to go with? We're actually in a pretty good situation here because the Ryzen 5 7600 isn't going to bottleneck any possible GPU around that price range, and with this case and power supply combination, we can pretty much go with whatever we want. What am I going to go with in this situation? You know, it's definitely got to be the RX 7800 XT, especially when it continues to dip in price like it has been doing lately. This is the Acer Nitro RX 7800 XT, which is a 16 gigabyte pure 1440p card, and I snagged it on Newegg for just $470. These are typically $500 graphics cards, and as that price continues to get lower and lower, the value of them continues to get better and better. Our next closest competitor GPU would be NVIDIA's RTX 4070, but that card only has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and you're not going to get as much FPS in straight up non-upscale gaming. Now, per usual, if you do favor NVIDIA and want to get better performance in ray tracing, or if you're a content creator, then go with the 4070. It's still perfectly fine. Our goal is to get as much straight up FPS as possible, so the competition isn't even really close between the 7800 XT and the 4070. Plus, if you shop on Newegg right now, some of their AMD GPUs like this one come with not one, but two free games. You actually get to choose between Avatar, Starfield, Lies of P, and Company of Heroes 3, so if you're already going to buy one or definitely two of those games, that's some pretty crazy extra value. Now, one more thing that I'll say about this GPU is that the red lines and like accent pieces on here definitely caught me off guard. I was slacking in my research on this one. Of course, this is irrelevant to somebody that truly goes for the no aesthetics, all performance mindset, but I did originally think that this was just going to be an all black GPU. That would have looked sick. I don't think I've ever even purchased an Acer Nitro card before and when I looked at the first picture of it on Newegg, I thought it was just going to look like this being all black. Sure enough though, if you scroll through these pictures, you'll see the red accent pieces and for a wood grain and black build, that's definitely not something that I want to see here. It was a mistake on my part, but we're at least staying true to the pure performance mindset. This was simply the cheapest 1700 XT on the market when I was purchasing it, so that's the main reason why I got it. So all in all, here's what our final parts list is looking like and we're at a total of just a touch over $1,100, but that's if you buy a 7600 for full price. I personally bought mine off AliExpress, like I said earlier, so I saved a bit of money there, but you can do whatever you want. Now, let's see what $1,100 can get us in the performance department, and I'm just letting you know straight up for these benchmarks, we completely ditched the 1080p monitor, and we only tested it in 1440p. Starting with 3 Mark's Time Spy, we cranked out a big boy score of 17,184, and Steel Nomad got 4,230. That's actually the highest Steel Nomad score that we've got so far since we started using it. For some actual gaming, here's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and in 1440p Ultra settings, we had a very solid 194 average FPS. Yes, 1440p Ultra. Same thing with Helldivers 2, we cranked that graphic setting preset to Ultra, and here we got 88 FPS. F124 followed up after that, and when using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1440p High, we're at 219 FPS. And here's Starfield, which does slightly favor AMD GPUs, of course, but in 1440p Ultra settings, we got 71 FPS. Here's all of the 
other games that we tested and we're looking at either high or ultra settings for all of these other than the typical ones that you wouldn't do that for like Counter-Strike and Fortnite. This is an absolute beast of a rig and I love how the aesthetic design came out. Honestly, this is like so much value for your money. These pure performance build guides have proven that it really doesn't cost a lot of money to jump into proper 1440p gaming. Even our $750 pure performance build was crushing 1440p a few weeks ago. Hopefully you're all enjoying this series. Be sure to check out the playlist that's on the screen now if you missed one of these episodes and also please comment down below on which price range I should do next.